Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. It is day 22. So we're starting week four. We're going into chapter two, uh, entitled The Tradition of Prayer. And uh, just want to encourage you as we continue on this journey, be checking in with your accountability partner and your uh, commitment cards, just working on one or two things as we move forward and as we deepen our prayer life. Today, we're looking at two paragraphs, 2650 and 51. And some of the things that jumped out at me. Prayer is not just spontaneous outpouring of an interior impulse. It's not just prayer when, when it's convenient or when I have a need. So do I just, uh, you know, do I just pray when I have something that I, I need? Or, you know, do, am I praying constantly? So I need to develop uh, a life of prayer is what the church is asking of us. For example, in order to be the best baseball player I wanted to be, uh, I needed to practice, I needed to invest time, I needed to have a good coach, somebody that was objectively walking with me, you know, showing me the way. And the analogy is, is the same in our spiritual lives, right? You know, we need to practice prayer. We need to dedicate time to it on a daily basis in order to become the best prayer that we can be. And then of course, we have coaches, right? We have the Holy Spirit that speaks within us, that teaches us how to pray. We have bishops, priests, deacons, you know, dedicated, lay faithful who have, uh, have grown in this ability to connect with God in prayer, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they pass that on in the faith. But it says also, one must have the will to pray. We have to want to pray. And how do we develop that will? How do we, why should we pray? I think that's a good question for us to ask. For me, the reason that I pray is that I experience this union with God and the fruits of the Holy Spirit that nothing can take away from me and nobody can take away from me either, especially peace, joy, and love. When I am investing time in this relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, I get a sense that even though life <laughs> continues to go crazy, I sense this peace and joy that goes beyond all understanding. So I think that's why we should want to pray. And we, so we have to build up this will because oftentimes we'll pray and then we don't think anything's happening. We're not hearing anything. And so we just kind of give up. And that's what the evil one wants. The evil one wants to separate us from prayer because he knows that this is the lifeline, you know? This is the way that we're going to remain on the vine. Jesus says, remain in me and you will bear much fruit. So where are we at right now? So we've learned about prayer in the Old Testament, the New Testament, the age of the church. Now we're going to be talking about the, the tradition of prayer. Something that I found interesting if in Dei Verbum, it says, The apostles, handing on what they themselves had received, Warn the faithful to hold fast to the traditions which they have learned either by word of mouth or by letter and to fight in defense of the faith handed on once and for all. And so as we had certain things that were handed down in writing in scripture, but we also have this, this oral tradition that was passed on from the apostles and to us today. And so prayer continues to, through the power of the Holy Spirit, um, build on this tradition of prayer. And so the church teaches something that says lex orandi, lex credendi. In other words, the law of what is to be prayed is the law of what is to be believed. And so what the church prays uh, then is, is, is believed. And so when we, when we pray, it deepens our belief. Uh, and when we study, it deepens our prayer. And so we have this cycle that grows within us. Those of you who have done Crucio know that the three keys to the spiritual life are prayer, study, and action. And so prayer, uh, prayer feeds the heart and soul, the study feeds the mind, and together this leads into apostolic action. And so the church wants to urge us on to desire to pray, to not just, you know, oh, I'll pray when I have time or I'll fit it in when, you know, if something's really going bad, then I'll pray. But no, to make prayer the most important part of our day. If you want to be the best baseball player, you're going to invest time. If you want to be the best prayer, the best disciple of Christ, we need to invest time in this prayer. And so let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we ask you to instill in us the desire, the will to pray. Help us to form good habits with a time and a place and a way of praying so that we can grow in union with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so that we can pray unceasingly and experience the fruits of the Holy Spirit, especially peace, joy, and love, and that we may bear fruit that will remain, that other people may come to know you through us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day.